welcome to another episode of Now About That with James and Sarah. I'm James. And I'm Sarah. And on this week's episode, there are spoilers ahead because we've watched and we're going to review Hellraiser 2022. Yes. I had seen it before, but I did just rewatch it. I actually just finished rewatching it a few minutes ago. Same. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was my first time watching it. Um, yeah, that's that's a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> Do you want to just jump right into it? How did you? What did you think? Um. So let me. Pull. Have you? Did you see the the original Hellraiser? No, I've never seen any of the Hell- Hellraiser movies. Um, which is surprising, apparently. Um, not to but, me. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that doesn't. That doesn't seem like a movie that you would want to watch. One and then two, especially when you were a child, you would oh. never have been able to watch it. No, no, absolutely not. Um, I was too tender-hearted back then to watch something like that. Um. I did um, so I was not sure. I'm I'm still a little on the fence on whether or not I liked it. No. There are aspects of it that I liked. Totally, um, yeah. But I definitely was very confused because I didn't look anything up about it either before I watched it. Yeah. Um, because I usually I'm I'm weird. I like to go into movies blind. Um, because I don't, I, I don't want to know anything about it. I just want to form my own opinions as I'm watching it. Yeah. I don't want to already have like preformed expectations or whatever. I just want to enjoy the movie. Um, and for me, it's easier to enjoy the movie if I don't know anything about it. So in this instance, I wish I had looked something up about it because <laughs> I was so confused I, because I didn't know anything that was going on. I'm just over here, like, I don't know what this puzzle box is. I don't know what's happening. Why was this guy just still screaming? Because I was like, can he stop screaming? Can he just be dead now? Like, what is going on? <laughs> and then, like, as I'm going along, I'm like, oh, okay, that's on purpose. And I'm just yeah. like, I don't like it. I hate that because I hate torture type stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, so I think the thing with this movie is if so, there's like two thoughts on it. Um, people that really enjoyed the original and liked the original versions of this movie, they typically hate this version um, because it's not really the same as like the original version. Uh, but you you can't think of it as like a continuation of the movies because it's kind of its own a lot right. like some of the some of the newer re- like remakes they're not like a continuation of the movie that's just like its own its own portion its own entity but so for the kind of people that don't know what like the movie hellraiser is about so it's a it's called a lament configuration and essentially in this version of the movies what happens is someone usually has the like has the box they then like mark people with the box, like solve the box. And there's six different configurations that the box has. Once they figure do one configuration, they mark someone with the, like a blade that comes out of the box. And then the Cenobites take that person and basically torture them and make them like, basically take them to hell and torture them in the, in their hellscape. Uh, But once you get to the sixth configuration, you then have a choice of one of their gifts that they can give you. And as we kind of saw from uh, Raymond, Raymond, is that his name? Roland. Roland, thank you. His his choice and like their choices are kind of, and I wrote this down, it's like the, the gifts, quote unquote, that they offer up are similar to like choosing, like making a wish from a genie. It's not always exactly what you're asking for that you get. It's kind of their interpretation of what you're asking for. And it's always meant to be a little bit not good, basically, with these with the the Cenobites and their God. Yeah, I just it was definitely 
weird. Yeah. Um, not in a bad way, but I was just, I was very confused. Yeah. Um, so, but I texted Nick, um, and was telling him that I was watching it. And it turns out Hellraiser is his favorite hmm. like, series. He what does he Hellraiser. think about this new one? Has he seen it yet? Um, I don't know if he's seen this one. He didn't mention if he had. Um, I'm assuming that he has. Um, but he he likes this the series because he says um it's karmic justice. Yeah. And so when he said that, the movie made a lot more sense. Yeah, that's basically how I kind of think of it too. It's kind of the the puzzle basically is it's your kind of the way that it it works through is based on your choices and right. it kind of shows you how um your choices and the choices that you make impact yourself and then the people around you yeah because like she didn't intend for her brother to be taken right but he came to help her and actually grabbed the box and got stabbed by the box so it took him because of that yeah so her choice to go with her boyfriend to get the box and then play with the box as she was having upset and mad at her brother made it to where when he came to find her and grab her he got stabbed by the box and got taken by the Cenobites yep yep um, yep it kind of reminded me though of um, the monkey's paw okay yeah yeah do you remember that story um, it's a movie too it is a movie, but I've I've never seen the movie. I've only yeah. read the story. Um, so for those of you who don't know, The Monkey's Paw is a story about um, a magical monkey's paw. And technically, you can make three wishes. And it, this couple makes the wish that their, their son come back to life after he's been tragically killed. Because of an, uh, the first wish that they made. Um, and he comes back. But he comes back and he's he's essentially still dead. Like to the point that they ha they then have to use their last wish to wish him back to his grave. And it's just kind of like one of those things of. If you are selfish enough. Then it's going to come back to you but not the way you expect yeah yeah so kind of the same thing like making a, a wish with a genie you the genie's gonna grant your wish but it's really kind of they're tricking you into making your wish and like if it's not specific enough even if it's really specific mm -hmm. they there's always like a catch to it yeah there's always a catch so and kind of like what we saw with roland the catch was his choice was sensation Mm -hmm. And he wanted to feel sensation, but his he didn't realize his sensation would be pain the entire time. Right. And he was agony. just thinking of his own pleasure. Yeah. Um but I did think I did think that that was quite fitting though, considering what he like caused like the people Yeah. on the way here. So um, I did think that it was kind of interesting that she was kind of the first person that we've seen, at least in the movies, where she solved the puzzle without actually drawing her own blood. Because like everyone else that solved the puzzle in this movie and all the other movies that I can think of, because I don't really know. I haven't I haven't watched all of the movies. I've seen the first one, but it's been a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, but like everyone else, it's kind of the blood. They f solve it and it takes their blood. Like yeah. hers, the first time she chose or she finished it, solved it, she, it didn't take her blood. Right. Which is why it ended up taking her brother when he grabbed the box. Yeah. And I said, I hate that the gay guy or the gay brother is the one that pays for her mistake. And it's not even her that gave, gave him to the Cenobites because it was like an accident that he was there. Yeah. The whole thing was an accident, really. Uh, like as far as that yeah. goes like she wasn't supposed to find out anything about it 
like she wasn't even supposed to survive beyond that the first yeah but then trevor couldn't follow through with that (laughs) but it's just like because he underestimated her he didn't think that she would be able to figure it out or if she did she she figured he figured that it would just take her yep um i did write (laughs) this movie and it the movie it really come as, comes after the gays because in the movie it the first the second chapter the yeah. first person that dies in the movie is a gay man yep and then in this one it's not the first person that dies but the second person that dies in the movie yeah is a gay man yep i also was just like man okay rude yeah i do like how they brought the woman that was kind of in the beginning into it as well and she kind of got what she deserved because we find out that she had been like she'd been the one that had been bringing him the people Mm -hmm. as sacrifice the first time he used like he made his wish for the configuration yep and then like they it was an accident again most of the stuff that happened in this movie was an accident yep um that she stabbed her frustrating to be honest Yeah. yeah and then like she got taken so she kind of got what she deserved and she was she needed to be taken out. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm like, wow, she was doing a lot of evil shit, like wild. Yeah. She knew I, those people weren't going to leave. Yeah, yeah. Once they got there. Yeah, I did say that my favorite kind of collection of the people was the girl that was in the back of the van. Like it wasn't. Like, again, it wasn't an accident at that point. It was like that one was intentional, but it was the guy. Right. Uh, but that was him Roland. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It was Roland but, doing it. But I thought that was the most interesting, like, collection in the movie because, because they were in a moving van and she, like, you could see it happening. And then the girl saw, like, saw it all happening in the room. Yeah. Mirror. Yeah. That was wild. I was just like, what <laughs> is going on? Yeah. We are I, moving. Yeah. My question to you is when did you realize or notice that the boyfriend was the one that was involved? Oh, I didn't figure it out until I think right before it got revealed is when I figured yeah. it out. I had, well, I guess going into the second viewing of the movie, I, I kind of knew, but like whenever they went to go collect it, I had a like a sneaking suspicion that he was going to be involved because I had seen the original movie. Mm, yeah. Um, but it was kind of cemented whenever he was trying to help, quote unquote, help the friend that got stuck in the wall get out of the wall. But instead, he oh. turned on the music and turned the music like left the music on without turning it off. I was like, oh, yeah. OK, he's definitely like just feeding her to this guy so that he can give her to the box. Yeah, I um I didn't I didn't think that at all. I <laughs> I thought it was weird that he didn't turn the music back off, but I I didn't think anything else of it. Yeah. Like it was right before it was revealed and then I was like, "Ah, oh, shit." <laughs> like the guy walks out, puts his hand over his mouth and then he starts talking to him and you're like, "Oh." Yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck." I was like, wow. I felt like that Tyra Banks meme. We were rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. <laughs> I wasn't because I didn't like him to begin with. But Well, that's fair. Um, to be fair, her brother didn't like him either. So there's that. Yeah. He kind of took over the role of the woman from the beginning and like was the one that was bringing him the people to sacrifice. Yeah. So he was he was stepping into that role and making his money that way. Ugh. <sighs> I, I guess, think the go ahead. I I was just thinking, I guess that the reason why I kind of was rooting for him is because I'm a romantic at heart and the fact that he like I don't know, there was a there was a genuine moment there when he was just like, No, I shouldn't tell you about this because you know, it, you're not gonna like it. Like you've you've got your brother on your shoulder, you know, that kind of thing. Like, for a minute there, he sounded genuine. Yeah. And so I just took that at face value. Yeah, I guess I could see that, yeah. 
So. But then again, was that him trying to make it seem more appealing to her? Right. Because it's dangerous. Right. And she was already going through some stuff by arguing with her brother. Yeah. And just, has she has an addict mentality. So like her thought process is, oh, this is dangerous. So I should get it. Right. Right. And like, I get that all in retrospect. But while I was watching the movie, that is not what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is not what I was thinking at all. But of course, I was a little bit lost for a bit. So I yeah. also was just trying to figure out what the fuck was happening. That does make sense. Um, I thought that the way that she, like my favorite part was the way that she figured out how to offer up someone else by uh, stabbing yeah. one of the, the Cenobites. And it was kind of just pure, like pure instinct and like reaction that she just stabbed him, stabbed the one and it got taken. Yeah. Which um, I thought that was actually pretty clever. Yeah. That that was an option. Yeah, I said that was pretty genius. Yeah, I thought that I thought that was a genius move. And then like the priest, it's it's called the priest, but every, everybody refers to it as Pinhead. Mm-hmm. Um, they seemed a little pissed and taken and like taken aback and surprised by that. Yeah, so, like you couldn't the way that the lighting shifted, you couldn't tell if they were smiling or frowning. Yeah, because it was just so ambiguous and delicious. Love that. Yeah, and this this priest is meant to be kind of um not not ambiguous. I'm not that's not the word I'm looking for, but androgynous. Yeah. Where there's no like you're not supposed to assume it's a, like one gender or the other whereas the other one it was definitely a male. Right. This right. one the person that plays it is very <laughs> like very gender not gender fluid. Very like non-gendered. Um androgynous so it's yeah. easier to kind of think of it as just a per- an entity and not a person right it's easier to think of it as a being of some kind yeah, yeah. rather than like forcing a gender on it um definitely my brain was just like I thought Pinhead was supposed to be a dude um, but then I looked it up. I looked everything up after the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, where I found out uh, some interesting things about Clive Barker, the person who wrote the story and directed the original movie. Um, but when when I was looking it up, I realized that his the name wasn't even Pinhead anyway. Yeah, it was um, and then, like, refer to as the priest or the cold one. Um, and it was just, it was just fascinating. Because I was just like, wow, okay. Because I always thought this was a gendered being. Yeah. Um, and they're not, they weren't supposed it, to have, a, like, gender at all. What's well, kind of like in the movie Scream, it's not even called Ghostface in the movie. Mm, that's yeah. just what people started calling it. Yeah. So it's I've like I've never seen the original Scream. Yeah. So it's like in the movie Scream, they don't even refer to it as Ghostface; they refer to it as the killer. Um, and then it's not until I think it's like the second or third movie that they start calling it the Ghostface Killer. Mm. So it's not not in the original movie. Interesting. Yeah, I just I thought it was fascinating. Because I just assumed that, you know, yeah. Pinhead was the actual name of the, the character, which I didn't think was very scary, which is <laughs> part of the reason I think that I never watched it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the bad guy's name is Pinhead. Why would I want to watch that? Yeah, I do like that in the end, she decided that she kind of understood the cost of their gifts and that her brother wouldn't come back the same way. So she kind of just let him let him go. I was like, that was the first unselfish choice she made in the entire movie. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a good way to end it. Um, And I I forgot. I couldn't remember whenever I started watching it, whether the boyfriend of her brother ended up dying, too. But it like he he didn't, which I was kind of surprised about. But happy. Yeah, I was I was sitting here going, how are they going to explain that when they get to the hospital? I don't know. It's it's like, like in a lot of movies. He's going to need a blood transfusion. 
It's it's like in a lot of movies. How do you explain a gunshot wound or something like that? And I know, but and every time I'm just over here like, what do? <laughs> right? Like how? How are you explaining this? How are you explaining this and then the police not getting involved? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I do have a couple of like things of trivia that we can read and I'll send it to you and we can kind of go back and forth with the two or the what is happening? I don't know. Why isn't it letting me copy? Sorry. No, you're good. Um, but we can, there's a few like trivia things that we can talk about just about this movie. And there's some stuff that's about the original movie too. Mm, okay. So it's from IMDb. Oh, Love me some IMDb. Um, and then the first one in the kind of Hellraiser trivia section, we'll include this in the description of the the podcast this week. It says Doug Bradley, who originated the role of the Hell Priest slash lead Cenobite slash Pinhead, had this to say about Jamie Clayton's take on in a Twitter post. I'm a bit blown away by this exclamation point. The clever redesign of the makeup, the shimmer on the pinheads, the quote unquote pinheads, the palette, whatever the keyhole locket tra- tracheotomy. Thank you. Tracheotomy thing is at the throat. Uh, it It's simple, subtle, disturbing and sexy. Everything it should be. Peace and pain. Doug. Hmm. So even like the original the person that originally played pinhole was talking about how he really enjoyed the the remodel of the new pinhead hmm. um the next one is filmed in belgrade serbia which is surprising yeah i'm surprised that they filmed on location yeah I'm sorry, like it said it took place in Massachusetts, so why wouldn't you just have shot in Massachusetts? But hey, maybe they don't have amazing houses like that one. That was one of the things I did write that I, I didn't talk about was the the set design in this movie was amazing. Like that oh, yeah, house. For sure. The house was awesome. For sure. Um, and then cues of composer Christopher Young's original score from the original Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser 2 were featured in the film. So there were scores from the original movies that were included in this film, too. Um, the next one, I think, is really interesting because of a thought that I had during the movie. So the six configurations of the box represent its six gifts. Lament, which is life. Lore, which is knowledge. Lauderant, which is love. Liminal, which is sensation. Lazarus, which is resurrection. And Leviathan, which is power. At the beginning of the movie, Roland asked for Leviathan. Um, But he did not receive Leviathan. He received Liminal. Which, like, because at the very beginning, he talks about Leviathan. Yeah. So, I think maybe they tricked him into changing it to liminal. Maybe. I don't I don't know. Definitely very interesting though. Um and then the idea of the pin covered head cinnabite being female isn't an, as new as some viewers thought. Again, I thought it was it wasn't really female. It was um androgynous. Uh, already in the original novella, The Hellbound Heart, the corresponding Cenobite was said to have a female or feminine voice. The only clue to a possible gender a human could perceive, making this movie truer to the, the text. But even more recently, the in the Boom Studios Hellraiser comics written by Clive Baker Barker um, himself and released through the 20, 2010s, Christy Cotton ended up turned into a female version of Pinhead when taking his place as leader of the Cenobites. Interesting. Um, Jamie Clayton could barely move while in costume as Pinhead as it was very heavy and tight on her body. 
That makes sense. I saw a video the other day that showed how they made those. And it's basically just a, a bunch of different um, latex pieces covering her, like their bodies on all the Cenobites. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Uh, the Gasp Cenobite featured two distinct traits of earlier Cenobites, the skin of her throat being cut and modified into a vaginal shape, similar to the female Cenobite of Hellraiser and Hellbound Hellraiser 2, and the skin of the sculpt being stretched and pulled up or pulled down to the shoulders like uh, Angelique Cenobite of Hellraiser Bloodline. Mm. I've never seen Hell Hellbound Hellraiser 2 or um, Hellraiser Bloodline, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> apparently Nick's favorite is Hellbound Hellraiser oh. 2. Apparently that was the first one he saw. Um, Bruckner, uh, the director, and the crew reached out to Doug Bradley to make a cameo appearance in the film, but Bradley declined for two reasons. First, potential complications with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and secondly, his desire to leave his pinhead performance's legacy intact, a decision Bruckner and his crew accepted. That's good. Um, when Riley first enters Voight's manor and digs through the, his pages, we have brief shots of various drawings, many of which being actually portraits of all the Cenobites, including those we've we haven't seen yet, such as the mother, the pre and the pregnant, the mother, the pregnant Cenobite, which we did kind of see her closer to the end of the movie. Yeah, that was like almost at the very end. Yeah. Um, it took four hours to apply the makeup to all of the actors playing Cenobites and around 45 minutes to an hour to remove it all. Can you imagine once you are in that, you're in that. Yeah. And that's that's the thing with pe that people don't understand or maybe they do, but they don't kind of respect it that much. Um, the amount of hours that go into putting that in just for like a couple of hours of shooting. And then the next day you have to come in and do that same thing because they are only allowed to shoot by um, standards like eight hours a day. So four hours of makeup and then four hours of shooting. Yeah. With, with lunch and all that stuff. Wild. Um, we have such sights to show you is an homage quote to the original Hellraiser film. So that was said, I guess, during the the show the movie yeah um trevor finding a partially stocked bar offers nora a drink with what's your pleasure directly quoting a major line from the earlier films oh yeah that's right i didn't even put that together because they do say that in the original films mm. uh, this is the first hellraiser movie to have a female pinhead in clive barker's original novella the Hellhound heart pinhead. Hellbound. Hell, thank you. Help. I think I said Hellhound earlier too. The, the Hellbound heart pinhead, a title Barker dislikes, preferring Hell Priest, uh, which was not used before Barker's 2015 novel, The Scarlet Gospels. It's described as modified to the point that it appears sexless, which I think makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, with this reboot, all primary Golden Age slasher icons of the 1970s, 1980s have been remade. Leatherface of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 2003, Michael Myers of Halloween in 2007, Jason Voorhees of Friday the 13th in 2009, Freddy Krueger of A Nightmare on Elm Street in 2010, Chucky of Child's Play in 2019, and now Pinhead in 2022. All the Golden Age primary slasher icons remake features bear the same title of their initial feature and of all only pinhead has been been has been portrayed as a genderless character in their remake making it more like the character as written by original author clive barker yeah which i totally like i didn't realize that all of well i guess i did but i never really even put it together that all of these movies had been remade already yeah i like i also i guess knew that um, but have I've it's just wild. It's interesting to think of that. I forgot that they remade Chucky. Yeah. Um, I don't really hate the new version of it, but it's completely different. I didn't see the original. Oh really? Um, yeah. Weirdly, 
Um, I, I've seen Bride of Chucky. Yeah. And I've seen um, Seed of Chucky. And actually, I saw Seed of Chucky when I was way too young and completely by accident. <laughs> I did not mean to see that movie. I just did. Um, <laughs> I have to be honest. Both of those I actually prefer more than the original one. Really? Yeah, I do prefer like Child or um, Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky more than uh, Child Child's Play. play. Yeah. That's fair. So that might Gen be a controversial. <laughs> That's the main reason. Yeah. So that might be a controversial controversial opinion, but I do prefer the re- or the trilogy, like the two in the trilogy, more than the original. Fair. Finally releasing with an October 2nd film festival, film fest special screening and streaming theatrical release on October 4th, 2022, ending the film's development hell and delays spanning 26 years. So it took 26. Well, I guess that makes sense. It took, that doesn't mean they were shooting it for 26 years. It took 26 years for a a remake to come out. Mm. Um, And then Obviously, it was shot during COVID, so there was stuff that had to be redone and reshot after COVID was kind of lifted. Oh, yes, this next one. Love it. All right. Famous American makeup artist and RuPaul's Drag Race season 13 contestant, Got Mick. Love her. Um, was screened in an audition as the film entered pre-production for the role of Pinhead after being seen by Bruckner in his Drag Race finale extravaganza look that was Pinhead. While Gottmik ultimately did not secure the role, like actress Jamie Clayton, um, both are prominent trans artists. Yeah. I That was one of my... That ha- so far has been one of my favorite drag race looks in RuPaul's Drag Race history. Fair. It was gorgeous. Uh, Roland Roland Voigt, who is uh, Serbian, is portrayed as Goran Viznik, who is an United States citizen born in Yugoslav, Croatia. Yes, and he was um, a uh, one of the lead characters in ER. Oh yeah. So, but I think it's it's fascinating. Um, filming took place in Bulgaria in 2021, with the cast traveling over and taking a quarantine pause that year with the Omicron COVID-19 variant. Yes. Um, in October 2010, Dimension Films announced via Variety that Todd Far- uh, Tard Farmer and Patrick Lucier, Lucier I'm going to go with that, uh, would be taking on this project with production slated for the new year uh, ahead of a late 2011, early 2012 release. However, following the release of Hellraiser Revelations, to secure continuing rights, Todd Farmer confirmed that he and Lucier are no longer involved. Hmm. Hmm. The man who first opens the puzzle box says his name is Joey. Joey is also the name of protagonist in Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Oh, interesting. Um, The second horror reboot of a famous 80s slasher film of demons to utilize a recovering female drug addict as its head lead protagonist including Jane Levy's Mia and Evil Dead 2013. I don't know that I've seen that. Oh, wait. No, yes, I have. Okay. Yeah, I remember that now. I've seen Evil Dead. I did not like it. Um, Did you see the new one, Evil Dead Rises? I don't think so. It's pretty good. I think you should watch it. It's like about a mother and... Um, it starts off weird and then it's basically about a, a mother um, and well the sister fighting for to save the kids but I think it's good mm-hmm. I liked it okay Um, in October 2007 saw 
Alexander Bastillo and Julian Mari confirm they would be directing the project with Clive Barker producing. In April 2008, Mari and Bastillo left the project. <laughs> so, uh, wow. there's some fun trivia. Um, yeah. And then I have a couple of the reviews that I was going to read to. So, um, these are audience reviews. So there's a one and a half stars. And this person's from October 5th, 2024. So just a few days ago said, now I really liked the original movies and even the low budget sequels, but this was truly awful. It was slow, boring and disjointed at points. I was literally falling asleep at one point. Um, you don't feel anything for the characters, like couldn't care less what happened to them. It seemed to miss the point of the original story. Not great. I would disagree because I was maybe not the girl because I really didn't care for her, but like the brother, her brother, and then her brother's boyfriend, maybe because they're gay characters. Uh, but I was kind of frustrated and annoyed by their deaths and their like pain. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I felt for them. And then the friend, the friend that came that was just trying to help. And then she ended up being taken. Right. Now, the boyfriend and her, I really couldn't care less about. I mean, so I cared about the main character, but only in that I understand the struggle um, of addiction. And so I just kind of, like, I, I empathized with that. Yeah. Um, that struggle and, like, understanding, like, that she is struggling. Um, and that one of her biggest issues is that she's struggling and not accepting the help that's clearly being offered. <laughs> so. This next person, September 11th, 2024 half a star lay movie lay movie every time they change characters the movie goes to hell that girl never stops crying yelling screaming and her hair is always in her face i mean at least fix your hair a little <laughs> like what she's a drug addict she doesn't care about what her hair looks like and she's distraught because her brother was missing slash murdered yeah but also there was nothing wrong with her hair it was just curly yeah <laughs> Like it wasn't a, it actually was not a mess. She just had really curly hair. Yeah. Um, this person said three stars. The demon things were pretty cool. So obviously they've never seen the original movies and have no idea what this is all about. Yeah. I, I don't know. I would give it probably a, a three out of five. Yeah. I think that's probably where my, well, maybe three and a half because I did like the, the, um, androgynous main main well the androgynous priest yes hell priest I, I agree um I did I did appreciate that a lot I I don't know I just I I would give it a three because I think um intellectually it was an interesting movie for me um but it was so graphic. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, I guess if you not, not going into it, knowing that it's kind of body torture, horror movie type of thing. Yeah. yeah I could see where it, it could come across as you could be taken aback by the fact that you didn't know. And then all yeah. the, how graphic it actually is. It's kind of crazy. It is wildly graphic. <laughs> <laughs> And then this person gave it a three stars and they said, I believe the original Hellraiser is one of the best horror films of all time. Needless to say, the bar for the remake is high. The pieces don't quite fit together as seamlessly as the original. This honestly seems like just another Hellraiser movie rather than a reboot. Pinhead and the Cenobites were far less intimidating than the original and Pinhead had far less presence. All of the aforementioned is probably why much of this was hidden in the shadows and the dark. Uh, the Hellraiser name keeps it above water long enough for the ending, which is pedestrian at best. 
That's a good sum up. Although I do kind of disagree that I, I, I understand why they didn't show the the pinhead or hell priest until the, when they did. Because it's like, why why would you start off with your best character? I mean, no, accurate. Uh, let's see. Now here's one. Three stars. An addict comes into possession of an odd puzzle box that moves on its own. People die until this viewing. I'd only seen one other Hellraiser film besides the original two. Not sure if it was three or four, but it was awful. This is still behind the original two, but far more enjoyable than I expected. A Zion. Oh. A Zion? I'm guessing is a person. Uh, the main character. Her name. I, can't, I don't really know how to spell it, say her name. A comma or A apostrophe Z I O N. I'm going to say a Zion. Okay. Uh, raises the bar with her impressive performance as the recovering addict who must now deal with the temptation from another world. I wasn't impressed with the new pinhead. I think Selena Lowe has the gasp, or as the gasp would have made a nicer shift of focus as the lead Cenobite. Some well-crafted scares, but has way, has ways to go. It's fair. I have to say, I kind of really enjoyed it. I... I enjoyed it, but I also don't really have that much. I don't really care that much one way or another um, for the first version of Hellraiser. Yeah, that's fair. It's fair. I would definitely be interested in reading the novella um, as well as watching the original. Um... But, I mean, obviously with the mindset of it's violent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More violent than I usually <laughs> indulge in. So. Well, that's all I have. Okay. How was your week? Um, It was good. It was a little busy and um, Karen wasn't feeling well, so I felt bad for her all week because she was like she was I don't know if like what was going on but she her head was hurting really bad which she typically has a headache but it was like worse than it usually is Mm. and then um, she was having problems with like her heart rate and stuff were really high so she yeah I don't I don't know what it was I don't know if it was like all, all of her pain was making it worse but it was a busy week um, we had new high orientation and then we had um, some stuff going on this week that I had to finish up and it's just a lot. How was your week? You're excited? You start um, your new job on Monday? Yes. I am excited to start my new job on Monday. Um, I had kind of an interesting week. Um, so I'm, oh, you, I'm, you met one of Lyndon B. Johnson's daughters? I did. I met one of Lyndon B. Johnson's daughters today. Fascinating. Did not even realize it was her until after I was done talking to her. No. Um, <laughs> so that was a little embarrassing, but you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, she. Just, I just thought she was a really nice old lady. <laughs> I had I'm, no idea. I'm sure um, it was potentially refreshing for her if <laughs> to I mean, not be like. Oh, you're Lyndon B. Johnson's daughter. Let me talk your ear off. Right, right. I think she was giving her grandkids a tour. Um, And so I just, I happened to overhear some of the things she was talking about. So, like, I found out that um, her birthday was, her 17th birthday was the day that they signed the um, Civil Rights Act into law. Hmm. Um, so that was 60 years ago. It's a good way for her dad to overshadow her birthday. What a <laughs> dick move. Jesus. Um, but I didn't know that. But funny, funny thing about that, though, is that um, it's also my brother's birthday. Hmm. She and my brother share the same birthday. Um, so that was interesting hearing her talk about that a little bit. Um. And just, I obviously, I didn't get to join her on the on the whole tour, um, 
she was just at, at the entrance talking about that because we have a big photograph of um, LBJ signing this the Civil Rights Act on the wall, one of the walls when you first enter. Um, so that's where she was. She was talking about that there. It was just, it was, it was fascinating. So that was really enjoyable. Um, yes, I get to start my new job. Uh, and I'm so excited. I got really scared for a minute there that something was going to happen at the last minute. Um, but nothing did. And so I get to start on Monday. Um, and I'm like over the moon. I'm so excited. I, but I'm also devastated to be leaving LBJ because I love working there. Yeah, but you're still going to be able to work on Sundays, aren't you? Is that what you said? Yeah, at least for a little bit. They won't. Um, apparently, I won't be able to after the ball season is over. No. Oh. So, which like I understand, but I'm still sad about it. So, um. But yeah, and then the other thing that happened is um, a Twitter mutual of mine who happens to be a poet that I admire um, was asking people to, if they'd be interested in doing like a review of her latest chat book. And I said I would be interested. And so I'm I'm reading her her work right now and it's, amazing chat book what is a chat book a chat book is um a very very small book of poetry so it's usually only about um 25 to 30 pages long Hmm. and it's just like a series of like really good poems um usually they have it all have the same theme um but not always Interesting. So, I'm I'm already on like the third poem and her her descriptions are gorgeous. It's lovely. I'm very excited. Yeah. Well, going back to you, um, once you get like started in your position, what is this position again? Like what are you what will you be doing? So I'm gonna be a patient services specialist. Um, I'll be working in physical rehab centers. Putting the pillow over people's faces. No. Oh. <laughs> Literally, pretty much all I'm doing is um, checking people in and out for their appointments, um, scheduling appointments, and billing insurance. Mm, gross. But these are all things that I've done before. Yeah. I had to bill insurance before when I worked as a pharmacy tech. And, you know, checking people in and out of things. And setting up appointments, I was doing that at Massage MV. So yeah, and will you be? I think the last time we talked about it, or the the first time you were applying, they said they were going to do like a you were going to be doing a rotation. Is that still happening, or are you just going to yes. be at one? So I'm going to be doing a rotation, but the locations have changed, so they're all going to be a lot closer to where I live. Well, that's good. Um, but I'm still going to be getting mileage. Oh, that's also good. So I'm I'm still going to be making mileage. So is it mileage from your house to the location or is it mileage from like the head office to the location? I believe it's mileage from my house to the location. Okay. Hmm. I believe. Okay. I'm going to find out for sure on Monday. Yeah. I'm just... I'm very excited. I'm nervous, obviously, um, because, you know, new job new new kids to to meet i feel like i'm starting school um but i'm but i'm excited i'm i'm really excited no um so you got your cpr certification and everything right yep i am cpr certified um i'm also certified to use a defibrillator that's fun so that's exciting um, I really, 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 really hope I never have to use these skills. <laughs> yeah. The goal I mean, is to never have to use it. Hopefully not, which I guess if you're in a rehabilitate, like a, a rehab center, um, like physical therapy. Yeah. It's less likely that you will. Yeah. I don't, I don't think there's going to be too many situations where I would be 
in a position to help with that because I think if anything was to happen, it would probably be happening during the rehab itself, yeah. in which case it would be the therapist handling pretty much everything. So, so to my other question about this, once you get started and you get like your your footing and a good kind of routine, are you thinking about going back to school for anything? I'm thinking about it. I would really like to go back this next um, semester, um, the spring semester. I just, I don't know. I think I'm just going to try to finish out um, a bachelor's in English and then just go from there. Yeah. Um, Because I feel like that's going to be a lot easier for me to do, to be honest. That makes sense. I'm excited to be finished with my doctorate, which it's not for another, I think I have. So I think I have four after these two classes, I have three or four more classes, classes, and then three terms of like prepping and presenting my dissertation. Mm, yeah. So it's technically not going to be until like October next year before like until I'm done done. Right. I was going to say I thought it was going to be about a year before you were officially overdone. Yeah. A little a little more than a year because I started early this it was in April or July I think I started. Um so I'm going to be I'm going to be excited to be done with it. Um and then after that I'm just going to start looking for like adjunct professor positions. Um and then try and do that like a, a part-time gig. That'd be cool. Oh my God, you as a professor. Wow. That'd be interesting. I mean, I'm not going to be teaching children. No, 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 I know. No, I know. Um, I'm just like, I'm just, I'm, I'm picturing Professor James Martin. <laughs> and it's just, it's very interesting in my head. Yeah can see that oh no i have two classes and then so after well i guess yeah after this this term which ends november 26th uh in december i have two classes and then i have two more classes after no one class after that and then um applied research project one academic writing and project proposal uh, applied research project two, qualitative and quantitative research design. Uh, and then applied research project three, project implementation and analysis. And then applied research project number four, project dissemination. Hmm. And I think the last four classes, project one, two, three, and four, I have to take on their own. Okay. Like I can't take them together because it's a lot of work. I mean, so we'll see. That is a lot of work. Anyways, how's your weekend going? What are you are you doing anything tomorrow? Since we're recording on Saturday. Um. No, I'm not really doing anything tomorrow. I I do need to go and um get a pair of closed toed shoes because I don't have like a nice pair. Yeah. I just have like some old tennies. Um, hate that name, that word. Tennies? Tennies. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) Learning new things about you. Got it. I don't Um, like when people abbreviate words for no reason. Um, I don't understand why you have a problem with cute little nicknames for things. Because it's not cute to me. It's annoying. Okay. Well, I think it's adorable. (laughs) Because I only wear adorable shoes. That's debatable. Hey. (laughs) Yeah. Ouch. Anywho. Um... So I have to go do that. Um, Other than that, though, I don't really plan on doing anything except just chilling out. I might see if um, Kat wants to come over and hang out with me and Bobby. When are... um... Nick and Horace getting back? Yes. The 21st. Wow, they're gone for a while. 
Mm -hmm. So they'll be flying back into the United States on Friday. Um, But then they'll be um, staying, I think with, I think they're going to be staying with Horace's family for a little bit before they head back. Like in New York. Because Horace has some family in New York. Hmm. Okay. But I'm not entirely sure what the whole plan is. I just know that I'm picking them up from the airport on Monday. Good. We will be flying out on the 28th of October. Oh, yeah? So we're going to Costa Rica. Oh, that's right. I'm going for work and Ryan's just going to go. (laughs) I love that. I love that for him. We are finding out that it's like their monsoon season while we're there. So... It's going to be raining a lot. Oops. So it's not like we're not going to, which I wasn't planning on going to Costa Rica for like the hot sun and the beach anyway, because I'm going for work Um, and we're going to be like four hours away from any beach or anything. So, so we won't even be able to go to a beach Um, Uh and we're only going to be there for uh, like that week. We fly out on Monday and we fly back Friday. Okay. But they do have a lot of stuff that are is planned for us. And I'm I'm kind of I was under the impression that it was going to be something else. Um, and it's turning into a a tra- like a train the trainer session, which is what I thought it was going to be. But I thought it was going to be more focused on like the the um, content that we present and like us working together as a team and revamping the pro- the content that we have developing it and then looking into other options to kind of have people especially like grow 50 which is one of the programs um have it to where there's different options for people to to take it um because it's like right now i feel like that's the one that's the most underutilized and not the most like fleshed out version of it but Um, It's turning into more like a work on your presentation skills. And I'm like, I don't really need that. And I'm kind of like, I keep joking with Karen. I'm like, can I just not go now? Because I don't, I don't really want to do this because it's not what I thought it was going to be. And we're going to Costa Rica, which is great. But I'm like, it's, it's going to be fine. I'm just, it's not what I originally thought it was going to be. So it's, I might try and turn it into that if I can. And I'm pretty persuasive. You are very persuasive. <laughs> like, I, I can probably count on, like, both my hands and both of my feet the number of times that you've <laughs> persuaded me to do something that I was not originally interested <laughs> or even knew what was going on. I mean, podcast, that's one of them. I mean, that is one of them. That's that's pretty much at the top of the list. Hey, you want to start recording a podcast? Okay, sure. You don't have to do anything. Just show up, have some input, and maybe yeah. come up with ideas a couple times. I'll do the rest. Yep. Uh, okay, sure. <sighs> but aside from that, this weekend, I don't really know what we're doing tomorrow. Ryan and I haven't really talked about it because he's been... We have a bunch of drag race that we had to catch up on and he's been working and they were closed Thursday um, because they were doing a um, they were redoing the roof. So there was a lot of like noise and stuff. And I guess um, there were too many fumes on Wednesday. So they decided to close on Thursday um, because they were like redoing the roof. So they're putting like tar and stuff down. So I'm assuming the fumes was not only getting to the customers, but also the employees that have to spend the entire day there. Yeah, no joke. So they, they closed on Thursday. So he didn't work Thursday. Um, and then Friday he worked his regular shift, but I was in, I was at work. So I typically don't go in on Fridays, but the last couple of weeks and then next week as well, I've been training, uh, giving and receiving feedback training session for the leads. So I've had to drive in and do those there, um, which is fine because I actually really enjoy it. And it's fun to work with the leads because 
I think I see a different side of the leads than their supervisors see. Probably. Because their supervisors are, are always like, well, we have all these problems with our leads. And it's like, I don't know that you have the problem with the leads. I think it's a problem that you are manifesting and it's causing the leads to react the way that you're seeing it. Right. So it's your fault. <laughs> Once again. Um, so we'll right. we'll probably go get lunch tomorrow at some point. And then um, I, we need to go to Target, I'm assuming, because we have to get some toilet paper and some other stuff. Oh, my God. Speaking of um, toilet paper, but more paper towel. I literally, I was driving back from the gas station um, yesterday on my on my lunch at work and I pull up to the stoplight and there's just this random roll of paper towel just chilling in the middle of the fucking street so it was a red light I just got out and grabbed it and chunked it into the back seat to like get it out of the street that's weird <laughs> I know but I, just, I, I didn't want to run over it I don't know I just didn't I just didn't want to run over it, so I just got out and got it. <laughs> but it was really weird. I was just like, what is this? A Donald Trump rally? What the fuck? <laughs> it was not a Donald Trump rally. It was him giving people I know. <laughs> <laughs> in in Puerto Rico. I know. During the hurricane, which like there's a hurricane Milton. So That's true. Um I'm probably just going to, after this, go finish watching some more of Evil, which is a series that I've been watching and I love it. It's it's yeah, really yeah. good. It is getting kind of annoying because it's kind of, it's not so much repetitive. I think there's maybe the nun, which is like the main reason that I wanted to watch it, the sassy nun. She hasn't been as much of a figure in it as I thought she was going to be, but based hmm. on the videos that I keep seeing, because that's literally all I've seen is videos of this nun inter interacting with demons. And it's like, I'm on season three and I think she's been in it maybe like a, of the, I think there's like 16 episodes per season. She's been in maybe six episodes. Hmm. So it's like not every single episode is she in it and she's not the main character, which is what I thought. The main character is this woman that is a psychiatrist um, now working with the Catholic Church doing wants assessments. To bone the priest. Yeah, who wants to bone the priest? Uh, but then it's also about the the priest and the Ben, who's the guy that's like their tech person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a good show. I just it's not what I went into it thinking it was because obviously I'm on season three and I just started watching it last weekend, <laughs> so. I'm one of those people where I binge things way too much. Yeah, no, it's okay. I do the same thing. I I'm, literally can't even talk. I'm very much a completionist and uh, one of those people that instant gratification is number one, one to me. So I want yeah. instant gratification and I want to finish it quickly. <laughs> You're like, I just want, I want all the serotonin in one fell swoop. Give it to me now. No. Which, I mean, fair, valid. Well, you want to call it a podcast? Yeah, I think it's a podcast. All right. Well, thank you for listening to this week's episode of Now About That with James and Sarah. If you like this episode, please give us a like, comment, and don't forget to follow or subscribe. If you would, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. This will help get the podcast out to more people and help us grow. Feel free to follow us on social media. Our handle everywhere is at Now About That Pod. So if we're, we don't come up in the search, then we're not on that platform. And if there's something specific you would like us to discuss on the podcast, you can email us at nowaboutthatpod at gmail.com. Visit our website, www.nowaboutthatproductions.com, or you can call and leave us a voicemail or send us a text message. With anything you would like us to discuss, our phone number is 765-557-4170. Thanks again for listening, and we hope you have a great week. That's this will be coming out on Monday. Sarah, have a good weekend. You too. Bye, everybody. Bye.